For Comedy Hype News, I'm Terrence Sims. As success increases in the Hollywood industry, the moves one makes gets amplified as if they were being examined under a magnifying glass. Many celebrities have spoken out against Hollywood culture and its toxicity in the past, but despite the number of stories that have been shared throughout the years, Hollywood culture seems to have operated the same. In the mid to late 90s, Martin Lawrence had experienced his fair share of scandals as a result of increasing success in Hollywood. Lawrence made it known that several media outlets had exaggerated events and made up facts just to sell stories and boost ratings. They made a lot of things up to sell a better story. You don't know what that's like until you've been through it. I got to tell my story. I can't let E! True Hollywood Story tell my story. As Martin rose to fame, he was met with tremendous success, as well as the faults of fortune and fame. Realizing that show business can be unforgiving, to say the least, Martin's reported problems would range from excessive drug usage, hospitalization, due to exhaustion, and even running in traffic with a loaded gun. This led to Martin's 2002 stand-up comedy concert film, Run Tell That, where Martin was able to address everything that happened in his life during that period. Luckily, Martin got through the rough patch and is still making a splash in the game as a household name. Here's how Martin Lawrence overcame Hollywood. We can't discuss how Martin overcame Hollywood without first addressing some of his troubles. In 1995, the rising comedian landed his first leading role in Bad Boys and got to pick his co-star, which was Will Smith. The movie made more than $140 million at the box office. It's a blessing as long as it doesn't become a curse. For Martin, it wouldn't be long before his choices would take him down a path of an actual bad boy of Hollywood. Martin was first hospitalized in 1995 after a wild outburst on the set of the film A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, which was Martin's directorial debut. After a second hospital stay, he hired a nurse for supervision at his mansion. A psychiatrist identified Martin as paranoid and prescribed him medication. In May 1996, Lawrence was picked up by police in a busy Los Angeles intersection after causing a disturbance by screaming at drivers with a loaded gun in his pocket, then suffering a seizure due to him not taking his prescribed medication. According to United Press International, Lawrence was seen walking in traffic around 12.30 p.m. on Ventura Boulevard. Officers apparently found a handgun in his pants pocket. Lawrence was then taken to Sherman Oaks Hospital and Health Center. A bystander who saw police detain Lawrence said the police were really forcefully putting their arms around him and trying to hold him down because he was fighting so much and yelling. He was like a madman. And I said, that's Martin Lawrence. I couldn't believe it. KCAL-TV, a Los Angeles news outlet said, Martin was yelling, fight, you know, don't give up, fight the power, or something like that. He was shouting some obscenities or something. His team said at the time he was dealing with dehydration and exhaustion. There is no handbook for it. I had to learn by the trial and error. I was in it. The glitz, the glamour, I was making the money. Had the cars, the ladies, it just caught up. Two months later in July 1996, Lawrence was stopped at a Burbank airport carrying a loaded pistol. Lawrence was served two months probation for the incident. In March 1997, he was arrested for punching someone in a nightclub and was ordered to perform community service. If Martin's close calls with the law wasn't enough, in 1999, he would experience one of his biggest setbacks after going into a three-day coma after collapsing from heat exhaustion while jogging in hot weather with a nylon jogging suit and a wool cap. Martin was even put on a ventilator. According to sources, he was jogging in preparation for his role in Big Mama's house. The news source explained that Lawrence had left his home at about 11.30 a.m. Sunday where temperatures were approaching 100 degrees. By the time a family member found him after he didn't return, he was found on the lawn, slumped over, and having difficulty breathing. By the time he got to the hospital, his temperature was around 107 degrees. I know there's a guy. I had to learn to walk again, to talk again. I had a second chance to take care of my family, a second chance to build my life with my kids. I felt like, in the coma, God laid me down and woke me up to be able to see a lot more clearer and it's humbled me a great deal. You know, according to ABC News, several of Martin's celebrity friends attempted to reach out to him, including Magic Johnson and MC Hammer. Martin was asked what his friend said. He responded and laughed, I don't know, I was high. In 2006, Dave Chappelle appeared as a guest on Inside the Actors Studio. The two worked together in 1990's Blue Street. Both comedians got their start in Washington, D.C., and Chappelle credits Martin for showing D.C. comedians that it's possible to make the jump to Hollywood. Chappelle brought up Martin's stroke during the promotion of Blue Street. What's happening in Hollywood that a guy that tough would be on the street? 
and waving a gun, screaming, they're trying to kill me, what's going on? Why is Dave Chappelle going to Africa? Why is Mariah Carey making a $100 million deal, then taking her clothes off on TRL? So what? It's happening in Hollywood. Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy. It's dismissive. These people are not crazy. They're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick. In 2020, Lawrence participated in an interview with GQ in a promotion for Bad Boys for Life. Martin was informed about Chappelle's comments and was asked, what was going on? Martin said, well, there's no need to relive the past, but I was young and I made uh, some irresponsible choices and, you know, carrying a gun when I shouldn't have been carrying a gun and just getting into things that I shouldn't have gotten into. Martin was even asked if he agrees that Hollywood environment is sick and he strongly disagreed with that. No, whatever it is, if I was involved in it or it didn't put a good look on me, if it was my fault or somebody else's fault, it's just not a good look. And I own up to that. When I was younger, I owned up to it and I own up to it now. I'm a better person as a result of things I got into when I was young because I know now not to do them again. I know not to repeat that kind of behavior. Martin said it was his family who made him realize that he had to change. They constantly got in his ear telling him that his behavior was unacceptable. Martin reflected, I don't want to be a failure. I don't want to blow this. I'm a kid from the hood and I've made it all the way to Hollywood. And I've got my hands and feet imprinted in Hollywood. And I don't want to go down negatively. I want to be held up positively. The company that you keep has a large impact on your well-being. Martin's family and friends didn't like what they saw and decided to step in. This, in addition to Martin stopping all drug use, are what was needed to get Martin to refocus and continue his reign as one of the top comedic stars out there. Big Mama's House and its sequels, Wild Hogs, Bad Boys 2, 3, were the blockbusters that it followed. The success of these films proved that Martin was still a draw at the box office and showed that Martin did, in fact, overcome Hollywood. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out for the original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Terrence Sims.